Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Secret World. We've just arrived in New York. As part of our initiation to, into the Illuminati, we need to locate them here in the city to get to our appointment. So I'm not going to go extensively over a lot of the UI stuff, as I believe you know, it's pretty standard. Most of you will be able to figure it out um, on your own. I do recommend poking around at the, on the uh, chat window here, trying to get it separated out. Um, general, the general chat tab has probably got too much stuff in there by default, and you know, being an MMO, you may want to squelch the general channel. That's up to you. Uh, fortunately, the community here is pretty good, so I haven't noticed a whole lot of trolling around and you know, random chat. So basically, it's pretty simple. Right-click on a tab allows you to change options. Uh, including renaming, deleting tabs, subscribing to channels, what channel do you want to talk to by default, uh, setting up uh, how it looks, and so on and so forth. And the little plus icon over here will allow you to create a new tab. You can also drag tabs out to create new windows if you want to do that. There's a little gear icon on the far left which also has a few more options. But in general, that might be something you want to poke at on your own. Uh, the rest of the UI layout is pretty standard. You've got your health and your status down here. Unlike a lot of game, or a lot of MMOs, or a lot of RPGs, there isn't a huge plethora of status effects. There really are only four main statuses, which are indicated by these four icons here. And we'll get into that a little more later as we start talking about weapons. Uh, over here, in this general area here, is going to be kind of your notification area. You'll notice the UI kind of has a very modern slash smartphone look to it. Uh, right now we just have a tutorial mission. Click on that. It gives us information on uh, how to move your character. You know, again, it's obvious, you know, right click and drag for mouse move, WAS and D, Q and E for movement. I'll be mostly skipping over those tutorials because Really, if you've played a, an MMO, uh, you know exactly how that all works. Up here is going to be essentially your mission tracker. You can track one mission at a time, but in general, um, you can only have one story mission, which is pretty much going to be the story mission throughout the entire game, uh, one dungeon mission, one main mission, and three side missions at a time. Now, that may seem restrictive, but as we get further into the story here and into kind of the first area where we kick things off, uh, you'll realize that that is really not a restriction and just kind of a different way of doing things that is, um, in my opinion, a very nice way without overloading people and helps avoid the situation where you go to a quest hub, you see a, a large forest of, you know, exclamation points, you grab them all, you don't read anything, you go out in the world, you kill 20 bears, gather 10 widgets and you come back turn them all in and you have no idea really what you just did in the story by limiting the missions they are fo trying to focus you in on the story on getting involved in the world on figuring out what is going on because story really is the main focus of this game uh, up here you have your mini map with uh, important icons for example modern prometheus is you know, over that way that's our plastic surgeon in the game um, you have this little circle here which is indicating a mission goal and it's colored you know, like the colors over here so the the cyan color indicates a main mission uh, and then there's a couple of shortcut buttons including zooming um, the world map and the pvp map so world map here pretty standard um, the nice thing about this game is a lot of the maps are designed with artwork to really fit in with the uh, universe so you know being a modern city and you know being the base of the Illuminati you have these Illuminati symbols you have kind of this blueprint look because of you know modern city and you'll you'll see it um, change uh, art styles when we, when we go to new areas again your mission targets if available will show up here not all missions have targets sometimes you have to figure out where to go on your own sometimes you have to <laughs> use your brain this is not a game that will hold your hand uh, up here you have your compass, so north, south, east, west, and your main menu over here on the side with uh, all sorts of various options and other things, and we'll cover you know, some of these as we get to them. So first off, we have this mission after just arriving here in New York called No Sleep Till Brooklyn, 
It's a story mission. We're on tier 104. Uh, you'll notice as we progress, we, we go through the tiers of the mission. And then they've got the general overview text here. And each tier will typically have a little bit of fla you know, flavor text or extra informational text. If you're stuck on a mission, sometimes going back to this menu and looking over the text here for each of the tiers might give you a hint as to where to progress. So, kind of reading what we've got here. Um, oh, and the difficulty here is listed here is hard. That, this game has no levels. This is roughly based on the gear that you currently have equipped and where you, and, you know, your skill levels in the various weapons and talismans. Talismans being the items that you equip, which would normally be called gear in most other MMOs. So, this is a general indicator of how difficult the mission most likely will be based on kind of an optimistic assessment of your gear and skill levels. Uh, so, while you probably do not want to attempt anything that's considered, you know, devastating or very hard, um, it doesn't mean that something is that is considered normal for you is necessarily going to be easy. It's all going to depend on your skill and on the uh, your gear and other things. So, here we go. You've been contacted. It's not clear by who, but whoever they are, they operate with considerable means and power. Breaking this appointment is not an option. Tier 1. Is there really a powerful secret society operating in the abandoned part of Brooklyn? If there is, there must be clues around somewhere, or at the very least, someone who can provide Another information. So Talk our objective, look for a lead. And the interesting thing is that most of the time, these little things is like, you may, you, you may be thinking, oh, my character just walked out of the subway, and suddenly he knows to go over here without any in-world prompt. Well, actually, there is an in-world prompt, and this is kind of some of the really clever things they've done with this game. These two people, NPCs over here, as you're walking out of the subway, are constantly talking, you know, about, oh, there's this um, conspiracy nut named Dave Screed who's over at the laundromat. So, there they give you an in-world reason, which your character would have heard, or overheard, to actually, you know, point you at where you're supposed to go in the mission, which I think is really cool and not just your character psychically knowing exactly where to go. So, what we're going to do, there's another little bit of the tutorial, which will disappear in a moment, and we're going to go into the laundromat here, looking for a lead. And we have a little achievement pop up, which is an exploration achievement, you know, explore New York, Knickerbocker which means find these you know, five different locations. The sewers, the Brooklyn Fight Club, the warehouse, the laundromat, and the park. So, of course, this is your achievement UI. There are a lot of achievements in the game, ranging from just general exploration to, you know, kill a thousand zombies, to you know, complete the dungeons, complete dungeons in a certain way, uh, finding lore in the game. And, you know, there's even an achievement here for eating 7,460 tacos. You can do that, you get a taco hat. So, you know, eat some tacos. Something tells me you're not here for a moment. No, no, no. Too much visibility on the street. They're listening. They're always listening. That's why I keep the dryers running 24-7. They bug my phones, read my mail. They have this place on CCTV. Replace my girlfriend with an android. The Illuminati. I know you know. And they know I know. You know? <laughs> oh, you're wondering why they haven't disappeared me. Shut down my magazine? It's because I play smart. I play along. It's a game to them, you know? It's all just a game. Oh, hi, 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 Leah. Don't worry, she's 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 not one of them. She's in my DD group. Role playing is the only avenue to resist control. We do nothing, nothing. They don't tell us to. They've been conditioning us in in in, in every kind of media for years. Okay. Example, Pac-Man. That's how they see you. 
just, just, a, just a little head, just a mind share. And you run through the mazes, the mazes they built, sucking down their pills. The fruit, the forbidden wisdom of Eden, never enough. And you can't shake the fucking ghosts, right? I mean, they're watching you. Their eyes are always watching you, even beyond death. This all adds up. That's where you'll find the Illuminati. At the dark center. In the ghost house. In the labyrinth. It's right here. Just, just follow the yellow dot road. <laughs> That's all I can say. And there's your prototypical, uh, you know, conspiracy net. And of course, this game being all about conspiracy, and everything being true, and all the myth and legends having at least some kernel of truth to them, means this guy, as crazy as he sounds, he's probably right in a few areas. So, one thing you'll notice near him is we've got this little uh, speech bubble. And this gives extra dialogue options if you want to continue to talk to him. Uh, it doesn't go into a cutscene, you just click on it and he, and he talks to you. And it'll gray out when uh, he's kind of exhausted all of his dialogue lines. Uh, if you do play the game, I recommend you click on it. There's a lot of well-written backstory and history and other things that you might be interested in. Um, it's a very rich world. But uh, because that's not making for a terribly interesting yep. viewing, yeah, I got it. I got it. Uh, we're going to continue. So we are now on tier two of four for No Sleep Till Brooklyn. So let's open up our log and look at tier two. Dave Screed says the Illuminati are watching. They are always watching. If this is part of your interview, there should be evidence in a trail somewhere. Objective, find evidence of surveillance in the laundromat. So you'll notice all it says is find evidence. It gives you a little bit of a, uh, a circle that set, and it basically tells you evidence is here. But of course, since the quest is to find evidence in the laundromat, that you know isn't terribly hard to deduce. But it isn't pointing you at anything in particular. Now this is where your deductive skills will have to come into play as you search around. And of course, my deductive skills say, hey, something surrounded with a yellow outline is probably something that you can do something with. And that's basically what this tutorial that just popped up said. So we can either right click on it, it says use security camera, or you know, when we're close we can just hit the U key on our keyboard. So we goal completed. Find evidence of surveillance in the laundromat. So now we're, we're still on the same tier, so the, you know, the background text is all the same, but the objective has changed to find more surveillance equipment outside. So we're gonna go and peek outside here and go, oh, there's another camera sitting up there above the uh, laundromat. So we're going to use that, and I'm usually gonna prefer to use the keyboard simply because unless you've got a lot of objects all placed very close to each other, it's usually quicker and a little easier to do it that way. The other interesting thing is we have a guy here in a blue suit. Is he Illuminati? Who knows? They're always watching. So now, still on tier two, follow the trail of surveillance equipment. Well, there's a thriving community of demons in New York, but they live mostly on the Upper West Side. So we're basically looking for these little cameras, and we're going to kind of follow them along. This thing up here is a piece of lore. This is actually a bit of a jumping puzzle. So um, if I remember correctly, we go here. Oops. Jump. Jump. And come on. And you don't want to jump up above the... Uh... And there's another piece of lore up there. Yeah. So anyway, I've it's been a while since I've done this particular jumping. Oh, nope, we can't get up there. We just kinda have to fiddle with it a little bit. Come on. Oh, there we go. Jump again, and here we are at the lore. So we're gonna use that. Grab it. Give us kind of a quick summary of the lore that we just picked up. And then we can click on the notification icon, go to the lore tab, and you can see that we've got our first piece of Illuminati lore. And as you can see, there is a lot of lore. And it's all written in a very interesting style. I 
think you'll find it very. In fact, I'll just read this piece to you. Uh, I'm not going to read all the lore in the game. There is a ton of it, and we would be sitting here for several videos reading it all, not to mention I haven't even found it all, because some of it is behind jumping puzzles, some of it is just hidden in clever little locations. You never know. I'm still stumbling across new lore that I haven't seen. Pluck the petals. The creatures tumble like she loves me nuts. The scenes change. Jericho, Damascus, Alexandria, Babylon, Jerusalem, Rome. But the plots and plays remain the same. Always, the Illuminati gather occult writings and treasures. They rise behind each new throne. And always, they encounter the Templars. And that's also kind of showing you that, you know, one of the main rivalries in the game is between the Illuminati and the Templars. And because I knew there was another one over here, we're going to grab that. That is again another Illuminati lore. So go back here, go here, factions Illuminati. The three siblings have a choice. Battle the sleeping whorls ready to engulf the world, or toil on in the struggle to define those who rule and those who are ruled. The children of Ai and Pyramid so long to reign, and diabolic rumors follow them like a fouled cloak. Yet despite these ambitions, they have no intention of giving their planet to monsters. Perhaps they will fight back the darkness and find a tidy profit in it. So, a little bit more about the world. Uh, the main issue throughout the game is the world's always had these very dark things, you know, trying to you know, break into it. Uh, you're going to see a lot of Cthulhu-like mythos in the game. And in the modern day, they're starting to break through. It's starting to become harder and harder to conceal what's going on. And we have these three factions here who hate each other and yet also kind of have to make this uneasy truce and work together to uh, save the entire world and yet are still stabbing each other in the back at every opportunity because they want to be the ones that actually rule in the end. Um, one thing that I did there with, to jump over here was turning on sprinting. That is by default the X key. You start with sprinting level 1, makes you a little faster. You can get access to purchase higher levels of sprinting up to level 4, I believe. Uh, and you can do that either through real money in the uh, store or through in-game credits. So if you really want to go faster, you can drop the, the cash for it if you want. But it is not something that's locked out if you still want to just get it for free. There is also no falling damage in the game. No matter how far you fall, you will not take damage. Which is more to encourage exploration, uh, which is also pretty big in this game. So we're still following, you know, these little security cameras down the road. Oh, here's a door with a giant Illuminati eye graffitied in front of it. And another little piece of lore, which we will pick up. Which talks about the Orochi group. groups, the Orochi group. Flip the priestess, the chairwoman, designation Lily Engel. The upright position. She controls the board of directors, just behind Mr. Chandra, beautiful, brilliant, and upwardly mobile. The reverse position. She does not appreciate the old names. We were there. We remember the monstrous nativity. There are tombs that are less haunted than some wombs. So we're going to go in here. Follow the Illuminati markings. Now we are on tier 3. Follow the trail of Illuminati symbols. The musty warehouse looks abandoned, and Dave Screed doesn't seem like he was all there. But the promise of a trail persists. So we're going to look around, and oh, we can go up here. You know, there's a little bit. Like, oh, and guess what? There's a little piece of lore up here. Another piece of the Illuminati. But in general, you'll see that we have these little hands pointing in a particular direction with an eye on them. And those are the Illuminati symbols that we're going to be following. One wonders, you know, for example, why is why would you paint a, a marker on something that is so mobile or prone to disturbance? Who knows? They're the Illuminati. Maybe that thing is, you know, stapled to the floor. So we're going to keep following the hands into the uh, sewers and three doors here, only one has the hand near it. Again, you'll notice that our map 
contains no information. It does not tell us where to go. We have to find and follow these symbols ourselves, use our brain, use our tracking skills. Admittedly, this one's pretty easy. You just, you know, they're always in view as you progress. But it just kind of gives you an idea of this game, you know, assumes you're smart and does not hold your hand. So we keep following these symbols and we're gonna go grab the lore under the uh, under the stairwell here. Another piece of the uh, Illuminati lore. And there is a very auspicious doorway with a bright blue Illuminati symbol. Now, because we are Illuminati, the game will actually let us through here, and it will go into another cutscene as, you know, we get our interview, essentially. If you are not a member of the Illuminati, you can get all the way down here, but there's going to be an impenetrable barrier that you can't get through. And that's to help keep these particular areas of the cities uh, cordoned off for particular faction members. So London, which is the home of the Templars, also has an area that is cordoned off, as does Seoul, which is the hometown for the dragon. So we're going to go off, and we're going to go for our interview. You know the drill. Run them through due diligence. I'm on it. Please, no head trauma. Someone pink Cassini to shut that fucking alarm off. Say. Have you ever seen a person void themselves from exposure to pink noise? Get these two freaks out of here! Hi. Have you ever seen a psychiatrist or taken psychedelic drugs? Whoa, 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 don't freak out! You got a lot of narcosynthetics in your system to fast-track the rapport process. So make yourself comfortable before you lose motor function in your arms and legs. Is it safe? <laughs> no, I'm just fucking with you. I'm a researcher. An experimental researcher. Zern, my schedule is triple booked, so get started ten minutes ago. Uh, yes, ma'am. Miss Geary. Management. <laughs> Still here. Ship. Knew that. <laughs> wow. Illuminati. Always there. Okay. Today, we're going to be provoking your extra-human potential. Routine tests. Psychic driving, invasive procedures, auto-suggestion. And this is all going to happen while you're under a post-hypnosis role-playing scenario. I wouldn't worry about it. I'm going to play you a looped recording of the catastrophe in Tokyo. And then, with a little... Chemical assistance, your uninhibited neurons are going to work their crazy magic. I won't lie to you, this is going to be an intense out of body experience. Wow, I'm pretty excited myself. And subject has left the building. It's all shut down. Kaiden Cho, everything. From the park to, to, to Arachi Tower. SDF quarantine. Good news for Tokyo, bad news for us. I thought the dragons thrived on chaos. Someone once told me the Illuminati had all the answers. They're saying a bomb. It's never just a bomb. Something worse. Something that brought the filth with it. So we fight. That's what us Templars do. I enjoy a good fight. It's just these trousers are bloody velvet. Sarah! Thank Gaia! Are you okay? How are you feeling? And welcome to the Tokyo Underground. So, you may recognize these three characters if you've paid any attention to some of the videos from the secret world that have come out um, each of them kind of being the iconic character for each of the three factions we have the Templars the Illuminati and the dragon of course they're all here in the Tokyo underground 
to, you know, deal with this uh, black stuff that is kind of infesting it at the moment. So, basically, here's the instructions on, you know, grabbing your first mission. You'll notice that she has a blue icon, which indicates that she's actually a mission giver for a new story mission. And it says up here, though this must be a dream, you find yourself experiencing the aftermath of the Tokyo subway attack through another's eyes. Follow the lead of the other Secret World agents and work your way through the station down to the heart of this darkness. Tier 1. It sounds like the situation is worsening. You should recover a weapon. If Zuberi was here, he'd tell us this is the worst time to argue. Well, he's not. He's down there somewhere. Sarah, get your gun. So we went and picked up the ground, the gun off the ground. Open the gate! Just get the air! Please! This could be electric somehow. No! Oh. My. God. And it's coming in the vents. Watch out! Nice shooting! So, combat here is, at first glance, uh, pretty traditional MMO. Um, you can use tab targeting or click targeting. And you've got keys 1 through 7 for your various attacks. Uh, right now we just have two attacks. And being a shotgun, you'll notice that we are actually hitting people uh, in a cone in front of us. combat. Your companions are ready to proceed in the depths of the station. So let's look at our abilities that we've got right now. So our first one is Pump Action, which is an active ranged ability. You'll notice, and I'd move my mouse, but the uh, I would lose the tooltip. You'll notice in the upper right there is the icon of a shotgun, which indicates that the ability is for shotguns. Uh, it had its instant cast and instant recharge. So you fix a cone, affects up to five enemies in a 60 degree 7 meter cone in front of you. It builds one resource for each equipped weapon and a cone attack that deals 132 physical damage. Requires a shotgun. So you may have noticed as I was shooting those guys that, that there were pips appearing under their uh, health bars and that was the resource that it's talking about as it's building. And you build resources and then you use other uh, abilities to consume them. So this other one here called Powder Burnt, active ranged ability, cast time of one second, recharge however is instant. It builds one resource for each equipped weapon, a single target strike attack that deals 194 physical damage. Effective targets also become impaired and knocked to the ground. So you'll notice that this has two underlined words in the tooltip. Both of those, it's if you're familiar with a customizable card game, you, you know the idea of keywords. And essentially, those are keywords for the ability. So what it's saying is that it is a strike kind of attack. So other skills may enhance or modify or trigger off of strike attacks. The, then it tells us that targets become impaired, which is one of the four status effects we have. And it's indicated by this icon here with the X. And if you have somebody targeted and their health bar will show up over on this side, you'll also see the X. And you'll see it light up when they are impaired. And impaired says you are in an impaired state when you are stunned, knocked to the ground, or obstructed. So that's a status effect that applies to your target. And again, other abilities will be modified or will trigger off the fact that the target that you're attacking is impaired. So those are things that you want to kind of pay attention to when you're you know, picking your skills later on, which we'll go into more depth later. As it is, 
both of our skills at the moment just build uh, resources, so we can pretty much use them with impunity. There is no mana uh, or idea of a, of a limited resource, so it's all based off of uh, cooldowns and how long your health lasts. So one thing you'll notice I did is I've now got a crosshair on my screen. And I did that by hitting the T button, which puts us into mouse look mode. And what mouse look mode does, or, you know, FPS targeting mode, I guess you could call it, is it means that my mouse now controls where my character is looking, and the cr crosshairs chaos chaos. indicate... Keep the to the distance, then take them out. That's your plan? Well, it's a plan. You've got points, Sarah. Make every shot count. We'll then determine what you target. And you can hit T to get out of it again. So it's a real quick way to kind of just quickly change targets. Some classes may do, but, or I should say, shouldn't say classes, but some play styles will work better with that targeting mode. Others you may prefer to tab target because it's less fluid. It's all up to personal preference. For fuck's sake, what do you need? A short, sharp kick in the ass. Hey, hold on. We're explaining to everybody how this all works. So now we have Kneecapper. This is an instant cast. It, however, has a five second cooldown. And it says an attack dealing 230 physical damage to up to three enemies in a 60 degree, 7 meter cone in front of you. Enemies hit by this enemy are hindered, slowing their movement speed. Requires a shotgun. So you'll notice that this one doesn't actually build any resources, but it doesn't consume them either. And they balance that by giving it a five second cooldown. So it's pretty useful, but you can't use it all the time. And the hindered state is, I believe, this one over here. Yep, you are in a hindered state when you are rooted or stared. And again, that's one of those kind of keyword states that you want to uh, pay attention to Incoming. Uh, when building your decks. Now, despite the fact that I'm kind of using a first-person view, uh, there is not a, uh, you don't click the left mouse to actually attack. You still just kind of click the buttons. And I'm getting my rear handed to me. Fortunately, because this is kind of the tutorial, they don't, I don't believe they actually let you die in here. Uh, the storyline reasoning being, of course, that you're not actually here, you're just observing the memories of a girl named Sarah who was actually here. Which is why your character was kind of flickering in and out during that opening cutscene. We're gonna need to use some heavier powers. Don't hold back, right? <coughs> I was passing myself. So now we've got Listen Sarah, you have to find Zuberi. We'll hold them here. Make a stand. So now I've got another ability here says out for a kill and it's gray indicating we can't currently cast it. It is instant cast. It does have a four second cooldown and it says consumes all shotgun resources. A single target attack that deals 365 to 723 physical damage based on the number of resources consumed. So in this case if you watch during the next fight you'll see orange pips appear under the target's name and, or health bar and then we will, once we've built the couple with either our one key or our two key, then we will hit the four key, which will consume all of those that are on the target to deal damage. Let's get out of the way. You'll notice that was he was also kind of charging up now that he's at five. We're going to use our consumer. Let's knock him, try to knock him down. There we go. So that wasn't too bad. Just again, hitting your uh, producers to build resources and then using your consumer to con to deal a large amount of damage to him. If you're familiar with how rogues operate in World of Warcraft or warriors and rogues in Rift, you should be familiar with, you know, kind of how the system works. Ah, the cavalry has arrived. Even where the filth corrupts, Gaia's power endures. Take it into yourself. Breathe it out. 
will this broken body mended? This guy, I don't actually know what his faction is. He may be unaffiliated. But uh, we've now gotten our a healing ability. This isn't actually a skill that's in the game. Um, it's really just here for the purposes of the tutorial. Uh, but there are definitely various hey, ways you can We have no heal. time to spare. This one is Spring's Blossom, active magic ability, one half second cast, five second cooldown, a single target heal. So we're gonna cast it on him. Over here. Good. But even Gaia would be tested by what is to come. Making a stand? Wasn't working out. Yeah, about that. This ain't looking much better, to be honest. Now is not the time for argument. I told you he would say that. We must reach the next platform! Well done! Again, holding off essentially uh, hordes of zombies here. And, a, and uh, one thing I didn't mention is because they are consumers, since it consumes more resources, that means to see we've only got three resources in this guy. We can use it, and still use our ability. Now, it doesn't deal as much damage as if we had five resources, but it's useful if you're about to kill a guy uh, and you just want to kind of use up all the resources you have on him. Because the resources for ranged weaponry, like the shotgun, is on your target, uh, they go away once the target's killed. We're actually just going to hold us straight back. through. Top marks for effort. Someone has to push through. This confusion may be all Someone the time we have. Coming down. There we go. And I apologize for occasionally talking over the voice actors. Trying not to because the voice acting and writing is really, really good. This doesn't look normal, unless Tokyo has some really cool subways. Pineal gland. Overstimulated. Higher brain functions. Functioning. That is great work. Well above MK Ultra success rate. Hey, can I ask you, have you ever seen a Jaguar tripping? Zerg! Well, yes. Look it up sometime. Hey, you'd better haul ass to the test chamber. Jump through a few hoops. Oh, oh, and you may be feeling some discomfort from the microchip that I grafted to your spinal column. No worries, though. I mean, it's, it's, it's gonna fade, really. And as your doctor, I'd caution you, strongly caution you, don't try removing it, okay? Those of you who might be conspiracy nuts yourself might already know about MK Ultra. Let Those of you who uh, might be interested, go look it up sometime. It's some interesting reading, and yet another example of the real-world stuff that this game basically builds off of. Again, we have some uh, dialogue options that we could uh, take up with this doctor if we wanted to. 
but now move around to regain your senses. You looked taller. On Dream is over, but the experience has left you dazed and heavy limbed. Training day. In the ever present eyes of the Illuminati, you're committed now. There's no turning back from this. It's time to become familiar with your surroundings and the expectations of your new employer. Tier 1. A series of combat tests need to be undergone at the test chamber. Na navigate the complex to make your way there. Last call for New Mexico. Exit zone slap. Zerns lab. And a little tutorial about the minimap. Here at the lobby. Very uh, modern looking. Some weird angles going on. And now to the test chamber. We'll sprint towards it. Because there's not really much reason to gently saunter over there. Tier 2. You'll need to rely on a broad and versatile skill set to effectively advance your interests at the Illuminati. The test chamber exists to help you develop and sharpen some essential combat techniques. Make combat or contact with the combat director. They give me clay and expect me to hand them back steel. <laughs> it is not an instructor they want, it is an alchemist. You, my friend, are in a world of tigers, and they will eat you alive if you are weak, if you hesitate, if you do not strike first. Here, you will learn to strike first, and strike hard. For those combat holograms, they can do nothing to you. I, however, have a high-powered rifle and a streak of what some call sadism. I call a will to incentivize. You have potential, but we have no time to tease it out of you. Inside you is a power, an anima, you can draw on to make yourself stronger, faster, a more effective killer. It is the magic behind the magic bullet. The weapons you use will become an extension of yourself. They are the instruments through which your anima is made force. I want you to arm yourself and show me that force. We have an arsenal here. You can experiment with all of them if you please. But when you leave, you can only take one with you. You have an edge, my friend. And I am not interested in how or why you came to possess it. Only that you sharpen it to the best of your abilities. Nothing less. In the test chamber, you can do so in safety. Safe. Except from me. Now, let us begin. Alright, and check our uh, drone real quick. Tier 3, your combat skills will have to be sharp in the field. Test the various options and equip the weapon that offers the most natural fit. When you're ready, exit the test chamber and head to the office of Kristen Greary, your primary contact. Objective, equip a weapon, and then return to Director De La Garudia. So this it will basically allow you to grab um, or try out each of the nine main weapon types. You can use the various uh, targets here to kind of get a feel for how much damage they do and the kind of area of effects that they have, what kind of area of effects they have, uh, and you know, get a very basic feel for what that might involve. And this is going to get rather uh, involved as we're going to cover kind of each of the basic weapons as well as the idea behind the skills in general and Dax in particular. So with that in mind, I'm actually going to stop the video here and we will save that for next time where we can put a little bit more focus on it. So I hope you've enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you next time.